Hey, God bless you, family. God is your brother, DJ Sam Rock, right here on The Blaze, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at soulwinnerswithaz.org. We also have full episodes. I know I used to mention it before, but I never realized that on the TuneIn radio app that The Blaze wasn't really on there as podcasts. They were only on there when we streamed live. So I made it available on TuneIn, the TuneIn radio app. If you don't have the TuneIn app, it's a great app. It's free. There's a premium version, amen, that you could get as well. Um, But now on the podcast section, if you just search The Blaze Bible Study, amen, I come up there and the full episodes are on there as well. So you could take that on the TuneIn app, iTunes, MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, uh, Spreaker, and of course, that's soulwinnerswithaz.org. And it's really on more networks around um, the globe, because um, if you look it up, I, I do it. I want to know who's bootlegging the Bible study, which is all good. I hope it's bootlegged by so many more people, amen, on their networks. But it's available right now on TuneIn. That's what I really wanted to say So as a podcast. So if you can't listen to this live, amen, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you could always listen to it afterward at your at your time where it's convenient for you when you have a chance to listen to God's word. It's always a good time to take time out in the day and listen to God's word, whether it be by this Bible study, reading the word for yourself, which is I think is way more important than listening to a podcast, is reading the word for yourself and getting revelation straight from the word of God to you. Amen. And um, I always uh, have word coming to my phones um, through the Go Tandem app. Amen. Go Tandem, G-O-T-A-N-D-E-M. Um, you don't have that app. It's a great tool. You'll have to take a spiritual assessment. After you take the spiritual assessment, be honest with that assessment. It will start sending you scriptures. You um, tell them how many times you want the scripture delivered to your phone. It will send you the verses to your phone. Amen. At the time that you want it. Uh, I have it at 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock at night. So I have it two times uh, a night, a day, and one in a day, one in the night. Um, and it works fine for me. So go tandem. I have a new app coming out soon, very soon. Amen. It's already released, actually, on iPhone, Apple's um, devices, and on Android devices. Um, but I just have to put content on it. But if you want, you go ahead and look for it. It's called uh, Sellout Radio. Excuse me. It's not called Sellout Radio. It's called Soul Winners. S-O-U-L-W-I Nancy Nancy E-R-Z. So S-O-U-L-W-I-N-N-E-R-Z. Look it up on the Android, uh, the Play Store there or the Apple Store um, for for apps. It's available right now. Amen. Um, sign up so that way you could get uh, the pre-launch. Amen. App. And then when I launch the app, I'll announce it. Amen. So God bless you. I hope you have been enjoying this series we're doing called The Conscience. This is part two. We're going to talk about or what God has given us all at birth. He gave us all the conscience. I believe even before we were born, obviously we didn't know what was going on in the mother's womb, but God did. He was knitting everything together. The DNA, the strands of the DNA, our mind, our conscience. And then he even started writing out our life in a book. Amen. That he knows the days of our lives. The days of our life are numbered. God knows the exact time from the time we were born to the time um, that hopefully we meet him as king and a savior in the air, right? When we, when our, our spirits rise up, our flesh goes to the ground, and um, he came to save souls. He wants to save our souls. He wants our souls saved. Amen. And it's not that we have, have a soul. I believe we are souls, right? So we are a uh, physical body. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We are three people, three three things in one. Amen. As human beings, but I believe while he was in the secret womb, the secret place of our mother's womb, he was knitting everything together, and he gave us the gift of a conscience. The conscience is uh, two words. Gone is the Latin word for with, and science is the word that means knowledge. So we are born with knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the sense of right and wrong. We know what's right and what's wrong from birth. But the problem is, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the one that pro- Jesus promised to send, and His promises. Is, is all good and yes and amen. When you're saved, you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit of God that governs over your conscience, teaches your conscience, directs your conscience, amen. So now you have the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit God, amen. Not it, but God, the Holy Spirit, right, in you. 
and he's teaching your conscience because um, before we were born again, our conscience was like really kind of loose. It would kind of tell you what's right and what's wrong. Amen. But based upon what you wanted, you could kind of like influence your conscience a little bit. Right. But you could never influence Holy Spirit God. You could, you know, you could grieve God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you can't re outthink the Holy Spirit. You can't outdo Holy Spirit. You can't trick Holy Spirit. You could grieve Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit wants everything that is good and right for us. And he teaches our conscience how to respond and how to react and how to move forward in Christ. Right. So let's pray. And we're going to do part two of the conscience right here on the blaze. Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for this evening. I pray for all my brothers and sisters right now in the name of Jesus that you would reach from this podcast, reach their ear gates that were transferred to their mind, to their heart, Lord God, only the way which you can do, Lord God. I pray salvation for all lost family members in my family and for every lost family member in the families represented of everyone listening right now. And I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over all the Christians, all our brothers and sisters right now, tonight, all around the globe, all around the world, Lord God. And especially in our own households of faith, Lord God, that we uh, pray for victorious angels, minister angels, arcing angels right now. Um, we send them out in the name of Jesus to our family members, our pastors, our leaders, um, our bosses, our enemies, Lord God, everyone, Lord Jesus, that comes in contact with this podcast and every single listener that's listening to this podcast will be blessed. I pray this by faith in the name above every name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, conscience. We spoke about it last time that conscience is the faculty of the mind or inborn sense of right and wrong. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. And atheists, although they don't believe in God, I really believe that deep down inside of an atheist, their conscience is saying, God exists. You're wrong. God exists. You're wrong. And because they hear that in their conscience, I believe that's why some get so angry when you mention that God is real. I've never seen an atheist get upset when somebody says, hey, the tooth fairy is real. They don't get upset. at. They probably laugh and say that's nonsense. But when you say God is real to an atheist, I've seen some atheists get so angry. Amen. And I think that's the conscience telling them God is real. And that's why I'm mad. And I'm mad at people that believe in God. This is the way atheists think, I believe. I used to be an atheist, sort of. I was agnostic. I, I can't say I was an atheist. I always believed that there was a God. I just didn't believe that there was a God that was uh, for me or that was personal in a way. I knew about God when I was growing up. I was in a Catholic religious environment where I knew the story of Jesus Christ. I knew his birth death, resurrection, what he died on the cross. I knew all of that, but I just couldn't connect that with me. I didn't know that that was for me, that you could have a personal relationship with the Savior through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being the Savior, God, man. He came from heaven to earth. He came as the God, man, God in the flesh, right? In the form of a man, he came to show us the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, God gives us a conscience. We're born with it. What a gift, right? We know uh, right from wrong. And because we have a conscience now, we could judge moral character. Like if somebody is uh, in a position of leadership in a church or in your job or in your school, and you see them acting crazy outside of that uh, leadership position, you know that their character is not right. And I think they know that their character is it's not right. It's just that, you know, a lot of young people say when it comes to the issue of uh, same sex attraction, sex before marriage, party life, drugs and alcohol. Young people always say, you know, I'm going to live it up now. Then when I get older, you know, I'll probably start settling down and, you know, turn to God. They actually don't. They're dulling their conscience because they kind of know that that's wrong. But since the Bible says sin it's pleasing for a season. So I can't knock them by saying, well, I had fun doing this. I, I actually had a youth years ago say, I love to have sex. I just love it. And she was in church. She knew scripture and everything. 
because the Bible says sin is pleasing for a season, right? So I believe that they're kind of like dulling their own consciences, telling themselves, you know what? Uh, I know this is wrong now, but later on I'll clean up my act. That's playing Russian roulette. Uh, and that game is the dangerous game to play because the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. So how do we know that if you're a teenager now, how do you know you're going to get to be my age and clean things up in your life? We don't know. So we're playing a game of time and it's dangerous. So salvation is today for you, teenager, if you're listening. You're never going to get things right. Only God can make things right in our lives and work it through our lives. So don't try to clean your act up because you can't clean your act up. So you might as well do either one or two things. Um, You might as well live a life of faith in Christ or die a life without Christ and then die again and live eternally separated from God. And the second part is not cool. First part is amazing. Second part is not cool. Let your conscience speak to you right now. If you're not born again, then we have to rely on your conscience right now. I speak to your conscience right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to everyone's conscience right now. And being that it was created, given to us by God, I believe a Christian has the authority to speak to the conscience and say, look, you've been here since I was born. So you might as well bow down to God who gave it to you who gave us the conscience, right? So the conscience has to bow down to its creator, amen, its gift giver, which is God himself. So I speak that your conscience will just lead you in the right direction. And once you get to the position of, okay, surrender, I surrender, um, I need Jesus, uh, then you could uh, start the process of admitting that you need Jesus. That's a great thing. Once you come to a point where you admit that you need to uh, be saved, that you need to be forgiven for your sin. Once you get to that point, you're on your way because you'll start believing the word of God once God shows up in your life and you'll be like, wow, I'm a different person. The litmus test of Christianity in my life was when God changed me because I was like, okay, God, if you could change me, I'll, I'll follow you forever because I know who I am, you know, and did he not change me? Yes, he did. And people say, ah, you're you were always a cool dude. You were already not. You're already cool. You're already good. I was like, wow, they didn't know. That's how hidden uh, my sin was from their eyes, I guess, because uh, I was no way good. But I guess compared to whoever they were comparing me to, OK, maybe I, I didn't do as much evil as another person. But without Christ, I could never change. Uh, I always tell people, if I could have changed myself before Jesus, I would have, right? Why wouldn't you want to change your life to the, for the better? I was going on a, a slide down to hell, amen, the way I was living before Christ. So thank God for the conscience that he gives us. And with that conscience, now we could judge moral character and human conduct. Human conduct, you know, Christianity is not, um, you know, behavioral maintenance like we're not behaving good because we're christians we're actually being led to do good things by way of the holy spirit he we have no self-control the bible says the only one who has self-control is the holy spirit holy spirit god in us and every single believer that that's the only good that comes really out of us because the sinful nature and you know, there's always a war between the flesh and the spirit. My flesh wants to do whatever my my flesh wants to do. And the spirit says, nah, that's not good. No, you shouldn't do that. And then the conscience is still there saying, that's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. That's right. But above the conscience and every believer is God, Holy Spirit. Amen. He's teaching the conscience. Amen. Directing the conscience. So if you're not born again, you just have a conscience. And be careful with your conscience because you could actually, if you really want to do something and you know it's wrong, you could actually convince your conscience to say, you know what, it's not that bad. So, you know, it might be wrong, but it's not going to hurt nobody. You could basically talk yourself into a whole lot of mess. But when you have God, the Holy Spirit, you can't trick the Holy Spirit. You can't 
trick God, um, you can only grieve God. And he'll look at us and be like, wow, shouldn't I did that? I can't believe you're you're doing that, knowing that that's not the will of God over your life. I've been to that spot. Have you? Okay, so let's get into some scriptures. I left off in Titus um, Titus 1.15. I read that last time. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure. Nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are defiled. Such people claim they know God. So this is amazing that these people that were just described as being defiled, same people are saying, are being said that they say they know God. But they deny him by the way they live. So this is great. You can really tell true Christians from fake Christians by the way people live. So uh, you can have somebody that's been going to church for 20 years and they did all the leadership things and they're in the worship team. They preach, they evangelist, they do everything. They're out doing evangelism in the streets and they know the word of God. They could quote you scriptures. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they're, you know, beating their wives acting crazy, hanging out after work, drinking, smoking, going to clubs on the weekends, and then back on Sunday, they seem to be like cleaned up. Well, people could fool people, but no person could fool God. So in this scripture, in 1 Timothy 1, 16, such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way they live. They are despicable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. That's the word of God on it. Sounds like I said it, but I didn't say it. It's the word of God. And I'm like that running back in football that, you know, the lead blocker. I put the word as my lead blocker and I I go right behind him. Amen. So that way I ain't going to get tackled for that. First Timothy 4, 2, the Bible says these teachers are hypocrites and liars. Wow. They pretend to be religious, but their consciences are dead. A dead conscience is a dead life. Um, a Greek word for dead in this situation is seared. A seared conscience. You know, there are religious people out there and their consciences are seared. They're like, it's just not right. Your conscience also has the ability to give you hints of something not being right in another person. I, I, it will tell you all the time. That's not right. That's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. But it even gives you uh, like a sense of when other people are doing something that just is not right. You can't put your finger on it. Amen. But I believe God, the Holy Spirit. That's why God, the Holy Spirit is above your conscience. If you're saved, he gives you discernment. Conscience will give you this little, you know, feeling like, I don't know about that person. Amen. I don't think I should have. Uh, my wife hanging out with this so-and-so person. I don't think I should have my husband hanging out with these people. I don't think I should have my kids hanging out with those kids. Your conscience will tell you because God gave it to us. Amen. At birth, we have it. And no, God, Holy Spirit will give you that discernment. And then you make a decision from there because now you're dealing with God, the Holy Spirit. God, Holy Spirit. So a conscience void of offense. A conscience void of offense it's to be sought and cultivated. What does that mean? Acts chapter 24, verse 16. Because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and everyone else. Let's get the order right. Have your conscience clear. Maintain a clear conscience before everyone else first. No, before God first, then everyone else. If you have a clear conscience before God People could talk about you. They could criticize you, slander you. They could do whatever they want. They could say whatever they want to say. But if you have a clear conscience, you maintain a clear conscience before God. And then everyone else, the Bible says we will be blameless. We're not going to be sinless. We're going to be blameless. The Bible says we can be blameless. We can't be blamed for this, that, and the third. People will always talk about Christians. People will always talk about people who are advancing the kingdom of God, right? We're not building God's church, amen? We're just expanding what God asks us to do here. He said, occupy 
And that's the term that really means take over. Take take what the enemy, his territory, take it over for Christ. Amen. And sometimes, is that by force? I don't know. In other countries right now, there are people fighting for their freedom, literally fighting for their freedom as Christians. Where I'm at in the United States, we're evangelizing two people to you know to receive Jesus Christ or with minimal violence. I, I haven't really see, seen anyone, at least in my camp, um, beating people up and saying you must um, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or defending themselves with guns and knives and, and you know saying I will not bow down to that worldview. I'm a Christian. Other parts of the world right now, there are people being told that if they don't denounce or uh, curse Christ or say that, you know, they no longer serve Jesus. uh, If they don't do that in other parts of the world right now, as I'm speaking, they'll be put into death, being put in prison and tortured and beaten for the cause of Christ. And they're still not denying Christ. Some will, but real Christians will be like, you know what? God has done so much for me. He's rescued me, saved me. My soul is saved. Uh, if this is the the way it has to go, this is the way it has to go. But in the long run, we win. Um, Christians don't lose. Christians don't die either. Amen. Uh, it's just an amazing thing, a Christian life. Amen. So conscience void of offense is to be sought and cultivated. We read that right now. Because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and everyone else. Romans chapter 9 verse 1 says it like this. In the presence of Christ, I speak with utter truthfulness. I do not lie. And my conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm that what I might, that what I am saying is true. Because if your conscience is clear before God, of course, Holy Spirit is going to confirm it. And then you know what you're saying is true. So in the presence of Christ, I speak with utter truthfulness. I do not lie. Amen. And I don't lie either when I'm speaking the word of God. See, but every the Bible says every man's a liar. Let God be the truth. Every man be a liar. So somewhere or another, we're liars. But when we speak word, there is no lie in the word of God. So if I tell you I'm not lying, I must be reading the word. So in the presence of Christ, I speak with utter truthfulness. I do not lie. And my conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm that what am I that what I am saying is true. This is true, according to the word, right? Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve. We can say with confidence and a clear conscience that we have been honest. You see, when you have a clear conscience, now confidence along with a clear conscience, that's powerful. Because now you talk with authority. You don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not you believe me. You're saying, look, this is what it is. I'm clear. I have a clear conscience before God. Amen. And now you're, you know, you're confident. And other manuscripts, um, the word uh, for honest means holy. It's translated holy in other manuscripts. So we can say with confidence and a clear conscience that we have been holy honest and sincere in all our dealings we have dependent on god's grace not on our on our own earthly wisdom it's a very important statement for any christian leader to say amen that we're depending on god's grace not on our own earthly wisdom can you imagine if we went out there as christians and just randomly spoke about God with our own earthly wisdom, we will be put to shame, more ridiculed than we're ridiculed now, called more names than what we're called now, and ultimately we'll be in disobedience of God's word, and then we'll be basically um, outsiders of God. Because if we're not saying what God said, and my motto for the rest of my life is this, I don't want to waste words, I only repeat what the word says, point blank, period. So if we're just speaking with earthly wisdom, nothing's happening. Those words will fall to the ground. But when we speak the word of God, amen, then we're talking. This is how we have acted toward everyone and especially toward you. 
That's what first uh, second Corinthians chapter one, verse 12 says. And I believe that's the Apostle Paul speaking. OK, first Timothy one and five I told you there's proof, there's evidence. The conscience is something that is huge in the scriptures because God gave it to us. Whatever God gives us from birth, from the very beginning of our lives is there for a reason. He doesn't give you anything uh, or take anything away. Or, and this is where the argument always comes up. So if he's giving us things, why uh, are he's allowing uh, babies to be born with all these uh, difficulties and, and mental illness and retardation and all this stuff, Down syndrome and all this? Why does God allow that? Well, my generic answer to that, amen, and I'm not being disrespectful for anyone whose child was born in that situation. I could tell you stories of, of our own children that were born with defects and have died, amen. Uh, our child that we have would have been the seventh child to to live, but through God's sovereignty, I don't know what it was, that he was just allowing six of our children to not be here on earth with us. But we trust and believe that those children that we lost here on this side of eternity is waiting there on the other side of eternity. So my generic, respectful answer to that question would be going back to the fall of this world. We live in a fallen world. God is not up there saying, okay, I'm going to do this to this family because that family doesn't deserve a healthy baby. He's not doing that. We're dealing with a fallen world, fallen nature. Also, my generic answer, also from my experience, medicines, medications, all this stuff, unbelieving doctors, atheistic doctors, evil medical fields and professional people are putting drugs in our system Amen. During pregnancy and during all this stuff and not really taking responsibility for the defects that those injections, shots, drugs and all the other stuff is causing to our babies. Very few of them. I don't think if any will admit if something went wrong during your pregnancy due to their negligence or due to their mistake. I have never heard a story. It might be some. So you could correct me. Of a doctor coming forth and saying we screwed up and that's the reason why this baby was born retarded or without this or without that or still born or died. Never heard it. Uh, could be stories out there, but I've never heard it. That's my answer coming from my heart with um, tremendous respect for every single parent that's listening that has a child um, that not deemed in our society to be normal, but with special needs. I'm saying right now in the name of Jesus, God loves you in your time with your child. Amen. I remember when our one of my children had died, I was ranting up and down the hallway of the hospital and saying, I can't believe God took our child away. You know, this child we believed. We, and then a friend was sent, a brother in the Lord was sent, I believe, by God to tell me, well, were you even grateful for the time that you did have? with that child that rocked me because I knew that was from the Lord speaking directly to my uh, complaints and the way I was angry at that time. So I'm believing that if God entrusted you with a special needs child, a baby uh, born that way, that you have everything necessary for that baby. Amen. Be grateful for every single day that baby's on the earth. God loves that child as much as he loves you and me, amen, there's no mistakes. God doesn't make any mistakes. God just positions people and places and situations to happen. He allows it to happen, amen, for reasons that we don't know at the time. But you will see, sometimes you will see, amen, in the long run, what the hand of God was doing. But ultimately, the love of God will show up in all those situations. So, I agree with those who lost children. Amen. I know what that feels like. And for those who are raising children uh, with these uh, mental uh, challenges and all of that, trust in God first and foremost and love your child. Amen. Love your child. The conscience, we're all born with it. Amen. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. And this is a picture of baptism, which now saves you 
by the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection, baptism is not a removal of dirt from your body. It is an appeal to God from a clean conscience. Amazing. God's word is amazing. I hope you enjoyed what you heard. Amen. And um, God is good all the time. Just always remember that God is good in your situation, in my situation, everything that happens. You know, all things work out for the good for those who love God and are called for his purposes. Amen. I hope you enjoyed the blaze, the, the conscience. And um, until next time, God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace.